Israel and Hamas continue to launch attacks in the Gaza war despite going back and forth over proposals for a temporary halt to the fighting. The latest coming from the United Nations. The failure to reach even a brief humanitarian pause illustrated the difficulties in securing a more permanent truce. Palestinian and Israeli casualties are mounting at a pace that could surpass any other Israeli conflict in nearly a decade. The 20-day war has killed nearly 1,100 Palestinians, injuring over 5,000, many of them civilians. Israel has lost about 50 soldiers and civilians. It's a conflict that continues to rage not only on the ground but in cyberspace as both sides have taken to social media to influence public opinion. Later, we'll talk to a new media innovator and a former U.S. Secretary of State for Public Affairs, but we begin with the latest from Gaza. And joining us from Nazareth is the former spokesperson for the PLO, Diana Butto, and right here with me in Washington, a senior advisor to the Israeli ambassador to the United States, Joshua Hantman. Thanks to both of you for joining us. The United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon earlier today issued a statement I want you to take a listen to that, and then I have a question on the other side of it. Let's watch. Israelis and Palestinians have a responsibility to stop the fighting now, to start the dialogue now, and to address the root causes that will finally uh, break the endless cycles of senseless uh, suffering. That means securing peace uh, through mutual respect, an end to the economic strangulation of Gaza, and nearly half a century of occupation. Right, UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon there. It was a long statement. He also talked about indiscriminate attacks by Israel, strangulation, ending the economic blockade, talked of occupation. Joshua Hantman, this was a really tough statement. Well, let's be clear. Israel did not want this. Israel called very, very clearly at the beginning of this escalation, which was caused by Hamas, that quiet would be met with quiet. The Prime Minister said over and over again, quiet would be met with quiet. But Hamas continued the escalation and then refused to de-escalate to the extent that the first Egyptian ceasefire, that was nearly three weeks ago now, the first Egyptian ceasefire proposal that was accepted by Israel, that was supported by the Arab League, in fact, the entire international community supported this ceasefire and Israel accepted it. Just imagine if Hamas had accepted it. None of this would have happened. There would be no civilian deaths on either side. But Hamas rejected that ceasefire and continued to fire rockets at Israel. Over 2,500 rockets, mortars, and missiles have been fired at Israel in the last three weeks. And I say again, if Hamas had accepted the ceasefires, in fact, four ceasefire proposals they've broken, Israel's accepted, and Hamas have rejected them. We want peace and quiet for our citizens. We want peace and quiet for their citizens. It's a, it's, it's a fairly simple formula. Prime Minister said quiet will be met with quiet. And even yesterday, it was said again, the IDF said, okay, quiet will be met with quiet. Right, let's get the view from Diana. Diana, quiet would be met with quiet, four ceasefires rejected by Hamas. That's actually a farce. The truth of the matter is, is when there was a ceasefire that was called in 2012, it was Israel that was the first party to break the ceasefire. And it's Israel that is the party that has launched this latest aggression against the Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. So it isn't the case that, that ceasefire or quiet will be met with quiet, because even if there is quiet on the part of Palestinians, what Israel continues to do is bomb the Gaza Strip, maintain a stronghold over, a stronghold over the Gaza Strip, besiege the Gaza Strip, and in ensure that Palestinians are denied their freedom. There have been more, more missile attacks launched against the Palestinians than there have ever been launched by the people of Gaza uh, towards Israel. If you just look at what's been going on lately, there have been more than 6,500 tons of, of uh, weaponry that have been dropped on the, on the people of Gaza. This is in no way proportionate to what's going on with Israel. And they cl clearly do not make any distinction between civilian and between combatants because because we've seen that 80% of the people who have been killed in Gaza are actually civilians. So in other words, Israel is deliberately targeting Palestinian civilians and is deliberately ensuring that this violence is going to continue because it continues to maintain a stronghold and a strangulation over the Gaza Strip and continues to defy each and every ceasefire that has ever been, been reached. All right, Josh, uh, one of the things that Diana mentioned there, and it's a point that's come up again and again, is that Israel has used disproportionate force against the, the uh, Hamas and against the people of Gaza. Well, I'd like to talk about proportionality. Yeah. Proportionality uh, it focuses on distinction, okay, the distinction between civilians and combatants. Now, unfortunately, we are fighting an enemy in Hamas 
that is guilty of a double war crime. And I'm going to get to this in, in a lot of detail in a second because Ms. Bhutu actually denies this. And she's denied it on CNN and Al Jazeera. And I wanted to come out and condemn Hamas's use of human shields. And let me explain what they do because there are tons of videos and statements that show Hamas are shooting from within the civilian population. They hide in hospitals. They're shooting from hospitals. They've converted two hospitals into their headquarters where they're firing at Israel. They've converted mosques into firing, uh, into fire rocket launching sites. They are digging their tunnels. And these tunnels, let me, let me be clear, they're not smuggling tunnels. These tunnels are designed to come into Israel, kidnap Israelis from their villages, bring them back into Gaza, and attack Israeli civilians. Now, Hamas, while they're conducting this double war crime, we have people on the other side of the world not only denying it, but in some, in some cases, they're actually condoning it. Can I just read you two very quick quotes? Very quick quotes, and I'll tell you why they're important. As long as they're short, yeah. They're very short. In 2008, Hamas MP, okay, a member of parliament for Hamas, said that we have formed human shields of women, children, and the elderly. He was proud about it. He said it on Hamas TV. That was in 2008. He said the Palesti for the Palestinian people, death has become an industry. Okay, they called for human shields, and no one came out and criticized. This is why it's important, because in 2014, July the 8th, just this month, the Hamas spokesperson again called on the Palestinian people mm -hmm. to come and serve as human shields. And Ms. Bhutu has, throughout this campaign, just denied that even happens when well, world leaders are around. I've got to give Diana a chance to respond to that. Go ahead, Diana. Yes, I'm happy to respond. First and foremost, let's look at the facts. The facts of the matter are there are many uh, journalists who are there. This Ms. Man Joshua is not there. And the journalists have come out uniformly and said that Hamas is not using human shields. That is absolutely but let's ignore the journalists incorrect. as well. And let's look, let's look at what other human rights organizations. Let's look at what other human rights organizations have said. And other human rights organizations have also come out and said that Hamas is not using human shields. But I want to get to something that is happening, Ms. Ms. which is that Hamas. Israel is the party that has used human shields in the past. I'll, I'll, I'll so give you a specifically, you so Palestinian are human shields in order shields, to carry out well, you're not their serious. military attacks against Palestinians. Now, I also think that it is important for... Yes, and I also think that it's important for people to understand precisely what it is that we are dealing with. We have gotten to the point where the Israelis are blaming the victims rather than them being blamed for a death rate of close to 1,100 people, including 250 children, and inclu including 80 percent civilians. They are castigating the Palestinians for being killed rather than castigating themselves for doing the killing. This is the type of rhetoric and discourse that is absolutely abhorrent. And Palestinians should never be asked these types of questions. To the contrary, Israel should be held accountable for its repeated war crimes Ms. against Ms. the Palestinians. Ms. Boutou, Ms. Boutou, will you condemn the use of human shields? You've seen the videos. You've seen them shooting from mosques. You've seen them shooting from hospitals. You've seen them shooting from schools. You've seen the Hamas spokesperson admitting that they use human shields. You seem to live in this alternative universe whereby you're the only person that can't see them using human shields. And if you're not willing, ma'am, to condemn their use of human shields, as I've maybe, said time and again, please allow me to finish my sentence. As I've please said time and sentence. again, okay. Israel is the party that has used Palestinians as human shields. International organizations have came out, come out very clearly and said that this is not the case. And journalists who are on the ground, you are not on the there ground, have, been have tons also of come okay. out and this said that there is no use of human shields. But I wanted to, I want to yeah. touch in, I want to touch upon an issue that you raised, which is the issue of uh, time tunnels and so on and so forth. And what I find very fascinating about this is that what Israel has claimed to do over the course of the past uh, offensive is that first it's a question of stopping Hamas, then it's a question of trying to get tunnels. What they really want to do is they want to destroy Palestinian infrastructure. And what Israeli people seem to forget is that during the ghettos that they were actually facing in Warsaw, right. in Warsaw there were also tunnels that were, that were fired. So we can't sit there and pretend that Israel has okay. had a very clean history. Dina, the truth of the matter is, is that there are war crimes being committed by Israel, and Israel should be held to account. All right, Diana, when you talk about tunnels and what is going through the tunnels, I want you to listen to what the Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said about Gaza. He was speaking on the U.S. television network, CBS. Let's watch, and then I have a question for you. The economic and social relief that people want to have for Gaza and that we want to have for the people of Gaza once this is over is tied to demilitarization. We'd have to, as this example shows, make sure that concrete that is brought in is not abused and brought to dig in new tunnels. We'd have to make sure that money that people want to go for the people of Gaza 
uh, for their social relief, uh, and we have no objection to that, is not used for buying rockets and missiles uh, and drones and everything else that Hamas is using against us. Donna, what do you make of what the Israeli Prime Minister is saying? That he is saying we're prepared to let goods go through these tunnels or through into Gaza to help people rebuild their lives, their buildings, but we cannot allow these goods to be allowed uh, to be turned into weapons. Well, look, look, the fact of the matter is, is that Palestinians have been living under a very brutal siege now for more than eight years. Israel is not allowing uh, cement to go through the major crossings that, that are overland. And when faced in a situation like this, where you're being removed from your home, confined into a very small space with a very brutal blockade, both by air, by sea, and by land, then it's obvious that people are going to dig tunnels. This is exactly what, no what has happened. And this That's is what incorrect. has happened in other conflicts around the world. The fact of the matter is, the factor of the matter is the factor of the matter is is that at the end of the day if Israel wants to see palace it wants to see an end to all of this they know that the formula is to allow Palestinians to be free and instead they continue to maintain a brutal occupation and a brutal siege over the Gaza Strip and and then question why it is that Palestinians uh, want to have their freedom may I respond to that Go ahead. yes Israel would love the Palestinian people to be free and to be free from Hamas Hamas, this brutal, oppressive, tyrannical terrorist organization, this Islamist terrorist organization that brutalizes women, gays, that gives no rights for Christians, okay, and that fires rockets, fires thousands of rockets. I haven't even heard her condemn the firing of the, sorry, so the indiscriminate firing of rockets at, at Israel. She won't condemn their use of human shields, which is killing Palestinians. Do you know before every strike, Israel sends text messages flyers and phone calls to get civilians out of harm way while they bring right. civilians into harm's way. And George, it's not let, the let me, Ms. Putin let is me not me saying you, it. Let me ask it's you this. Wouldn't, wouldn't the starting it. point be ending the occupation? Well, let me remind you, sir, that we left the Gaza Strip in 2005. Well, we removed 10,000 settlers, yeah. 10,000 Jews from their homes. Right. We removed and the IDF to maintain and okay, a not, brutal not, occupation. All right, not even the United Nations thinks that you do not occupy Gaza right now. I want you to take a listen, Josh, uh, to something that Hanan Ashrawi, a Palestinian leader, said about bringing the violence to an end. Let's watch. We've asked for ceasefires, but we need a ceasefire that will bring about also an end to the conditions that are creating and generating all this violence. Relifting the siege of Gaza, allowing the Gazan people to be able to fish in their own sea, to plant their own lands instead of having them declared buffer zones by Israel, to be free to leave, to meet their families, to live, to study, to build. But Israel is, is not allowed to do any of these things. But That's why there's no use just dealing with the latest attack. We need to put in place conditions that will prevent its recurrence. Let's remember, okay, in 2005, when we pulled out of Gaza, a host of donors actually bought the greenhouses and the agricultural facilities from the Jewish settlers who left, who we took out from their houses, and gave them to the Palestinians. They built a terror state that's been firing rockets. And let me remind you, Hamas actually took control over that area in a putsch. They kicked out Fatah. They kicked out the PLO that Ms. Bhutu represented. Okay, he kicked them out. They were pushing Fatah activists off roofs. They were killing them, and they took over in a brutal putsch. We talk about this blockade. The naval blockade is there to stop weapons coming into the Gaza Strip because these weapons are fired at Israel. Over 10,000 rockets and missiles have been fired at us in the last decade. That's why the naval blockade is there. The land blockade is not actually a land blockade. We send in 50,000 tons worth of goods every single week through the Kerem Shalom crossing, including the cement that goes into, please let me finish that, that goes into building these tunnels that are now being used to attack Israelis. Just imagine if those thousands of tons worth of cement had been used to build hospitals and daycare centers and schools and not these tunnels that are being used to attack Israel. Let's, let's be clear here. What they did in 2005 was they pulled out their settlers, but they didn't end the control over the Gaza Strip. Basic things like trying to get food in requires a permit. Israelis actually count the number of calories that Palestinians are allowed in. And this idea that cement she, and so on is allowed in work. is a farce. At the end of the day, this is a brutal military siege that the world has condemned world over and if we want to move forward which is what I believe in doing I think that we have to start recognizing that these people are entitled to their freedom and with their freedom there will be security but you cannot just have it as a one-way street okay Diana Buto and Nazareth Joshua Huntman here with me in Washington thanks to both of you for joining us
When we come back, there's a second front in the Gaza conflict raging in cyberspace. Who's winning the social media war for hearts and minds? That's next. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.